Now Haskell is a functional language, so it's full of functions. Functions always have exactly one argument. The type of a function is a to b, where a is the type of the domain and b is the type of the range of the function. Let's have a look at some examples. Now I have modified the tiny program such that it now contains the function f of x equals x plus 1. Ah, let's save that. And load it into the buffer. Let's see what we get. Ah, f of 8. Let's try to find out what f of 8 is. My guess is that it's 9. Oh yes, it is 9. Uh, and the type of 9 is if a is a number type, then it's a Everything is as we would expect. What is the type of f? f is a function. Functions cannot be shown, so we have to resort to this to, sh to get the type of f, but t of f. And the type of f is an arrow type. It is a to a, where a is a number type, so this type is. If a is a number type, then that implies that uh, f has type a to a. Let's define slightly different function, let's call it g, just to perform g of x is x and true and is logical and so um, my guess is that x should be a boolean for this to work, my guess is that g should have oh, let's see here we go what is g of true that's true. Oh yes, it is true. What's g false? Type of g. Well, it is bool to bool. So that's just as we suspected. So how did I figure out that it should be bool to bool? Well, here I have an expression. I don't know what its type is, but uh, I know that as a logical and, and the logical and takes a boolean and another boolean returns a boolean. This is a boolean. My guess is that the whole expression should have type boolean. This can only make sense if x has type bool. So that's why the result type, range type, must be bool, and that's why the domain type must be bool. So this is indeed a function bool to bool. Everything makes sense. Now the question is, how can we write functions with more than one argument? Because we would certainly want to do that. Well, um, what we can do is we can write a function in current form. Here's an example. To multiply x and y, which is x times y, we write uh, this as multiply x juxtaposed with y. And what's the type of multiply? It is if a is a type from the type class of, of numbered types, then it's a to a to a. This is a higher order function because this function takes an argument of number type and then it returns a function that given an argument of number type returns a number. So we can write functions that take more than one argument by writing them in current form. We take the, the arguments one at a time. Isn't there another way? Oh yes, of course, there is another way to write functions with more than one argument. If we want, we can write a function in uncurred form. Here it is, it's called multiply 2. It takes an x and a y, returns x times y. And now the type of this function is, if a is a type from the type class of number types, then it's a comma a to a. So this function takes one argument, it still takes one argument, the argument is a pair type, a comma a for any number type a. So that's the uncurred form, and uh, as we shall see, one can pass back and forth between curried and uncurred uh, forms of functions. Uncurried functions uh, have tuple types involved, uh, whereas curried functions are higher order functions. Um, one of the very nice things you can do in Haskell just as in Scheme is that you can write recursive functions and here for starters is a factorial function.
Now to write the factorial function, let's call it fact, then fact of n, we're satisfied that 0 factorial is 1, so first we must test if n is equals to, and here we write double equality sign, if n is equals to naught, then the value should be 1, else it should be m times the factorial of n minus 1, so that's n times, and here's the recursive call fact of n minus 1. Note that um, generally we don't need to write uh, the um, the parentheses around the argument of a function. In fact, I never do that. You don't do that in Haskell. But sometimes, if you want things to be passed correctly, you can write parentheses about the argument. You're not uh, for, you're not disallowed to write it, but uh, you don't do that in functional programming if you can avoid it. Anyway, so that's the factorial function. Let's save the program. Let's load it into Haskell. Everything worked fine. Um, let's try applying the fact function to 5. My guess is that it should return 120. Wow, it did. Now, isn't that nice? What's the type of factorial function? Let's see. My guess is as follows. Let's see what the definition, the right-hand side of the the function definition says. It says that um, if n is equal to 0, this means that n must be some value of some equality type. Do we know more about this n? Yes, we know that over here we multiply n by something, so n must also be uh, of some number type, so it belongs to the num type class, and over here we saw it must belong to the eq type class. Um, so this should be a function that, given a type of equality type and number type, then returns, well, what does it return? What type do we return? Well, sometimes we return a 1. And that also makes sense over here because we're multiplying n by something. Multiplication is only defined for numbers and it returns some number. So uh, this should be the, uh, the, uh, the result type should be um, a number type. And indeed, that is the case that if a is an equality type and a is a number type, then the type of the factorial function is a to a. So that all makes sense now, isn't that nice? Well, it is nice, but there are other ways of defining the factorial function in a slightly more readable manner, and I'll get around to that now.